All right, I'm going to give you guys a quick intro to this week's guest, Henry Toto. Yes, that's how you say it. We go over the whole thing. It's actually a hilarious conversation. But Henry has had an unbelievable year for the Texans because last year in his rookie year, just kind of looking at some of his stats right now, he had a career high, obviously a career high his rookie year. He had 61 tackles last year. He's already got 38 so far this year, and he's filled in admirably for Christian Harris. I don't think a lot of people really thought that Henry was going to fill in as well as he has for Christian Harris. We thought Harris was the best linebacker on this core coming in, Aziz Al-Shayir. Also, we knew he was good. We didn't really know necessarily what we were going to get. We knew what we were going to get in Christian, but still not back. Henry's been awesome. So without further ado, um, I'm, you guys listen to this conversation. And then on the back end, uh, we're going to talk a lot about the Texans. Who needs to step up now that Nico Collins is out for the next month at least? And then we're also talking about the running game and how good C.J. Stroud has been. The stats that I have of what C.J. could do this week are insane. The dude's a stud. Enjoy the conversation here on Kicking It With Kunkel with Henry. All right, I wanna, hold on. I want to start with this. Because I just saw this. I've never seen this side of you, bro. What's that? I didn't know you had this in you. To shed a block like that? And so then I'm go like, get him? And then go get him. <laughs> when did this come out? Like, I, I don't. I mean, with all due respect, last you know, year was that. Was no, that, that, there? That, that Henry was no. That Henry is the Henry everybody knows and and loves and. <sighs> I yeah, bet. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the style of football that I need to keep playing over and over. That's how I've been playing since I was little. But what? So like, why this year versus last year? Like, where did it come from again? Man, um, like that's fun like, to watch. No, it, it's fun to play like that. <laughs> I mean, dang, dude. <laughs> Um, I think it kind of all just stems from confidence. I think last year I wasn't as confident as I am this year. Second year under the belt, you know, and I got a good leader in our room, Aziz, yeah. um, that constantly reminds me every single day, like, man, you're one hell of a player. There's a reason why you're in the NFL, and, like, he just reassures that confidence that I, that's been instilled in me since I was little. So I just got to <laughs> keep showing up every day. I mean, I haven't seen something like that since high school. That is yeah. – that's a different level I appreciate of linebacker that. football. That, that's good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. How, it's crazy for people to hear someone like you in the NFL. They just think like the greatest of the great in the, in the world playing in the league to yeah. have like a confidence issue your rookie year. Yeah. Like how do you get over that? How do you get through that? What's that like as a human being, Man. not just even a football player? It was just one of those things where, you know, you were a small fish and then you come into this big old ocean with, you know, with sharks and people that's got to feed their family. So I think once I realized like everybody's trying to feed their family in this, in this business right here is like, I have to react that way too. Like, this is like my only option where my wife can eat, where I can feed my dog and go buy my dog some dog food. Um, you know, and I think that kind of switched on this year for me is like, this is my way of living. So um, every day means something to me when I come to building now. When that switched, what did you do different in the off season? Did you train differently? Oh man, I, there was an interview that I had yeah. and, <laughs> and I told him, he was like, hey, you know, we kind of changed. I was like, man, I was a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I was fat, I was fat last year. And I, I, I can admit it, I didn't know how to be a professional. Um, I didn't know how to obviously take care of my body, put the right things in my body, go to sleep early um, and train like a professional. So this off season um, kind of spent the first half with you know, my dad and then my lifelong strength conditioning coach, Coach Wine, and just kind of worked on the fundamental things, changing my body, my diet, and then came here and worked with, you know, our training staff here before camp and then just got in shape and tried to just get right through there. So kind of having a plan was, was the biggest thing with me and my dad. Um, and then we just So what did you cut out of the diet to become less of a fat oh ass? Gosh, <laughs> everything. Cake. My wife's a big baker. Cake? So oh. she she bakes a lot of cake, a lot of cookies. She's a, she, uh, she cooks every good thing you could think of. Um, so basically I had to cut out what the hell she's cooking. So did you have to sit her down and be like, okay. Yeah, I was like, babe, look, look. intervention for her baking? Yeah, I was like, babe, we gotta cut it out just a little bit. We can eat it on Saturdays. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of sacrifice, a lot, cause you know, I'm a big family guy. And when family mm -hmm. comes over, I'm around family in the off season. I like staying up, I like conversating. Um, I like going to dinners, I like being with people. Um, so it was a lot, of, a lot of sacrifice that I had to make that I wasn't used to. So what time did you go to bed? What time are you going to bed now? Oh, I'm going to bed at 9 o'clock every night. 9, 9.30. Feels good though, right? Yeah, it feels good. I wake up with some energy, so I'll be all right. What time do you used to go to bed? Oh, what man. were you doing when you were up late? Playing video games I'm and playing snacking? Game. I'm playing games. Yeah. I'm eating some hot Cheetos, some hot fries, some fun games. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm playing games. I'm mad in with the boys. Uh, but I was always big chilling with the boys. Isn't it crazy, though, when you 
like what you think is like decent or normal whatever food yeah. is just like poison to you. Oh, it's bad. Especially I mean, with what you do. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. You know, high school you can get away with it. Mm -hmm. College you kind of get away with it. You know, you're more athletic. You know more football than people. But then you get here is like it's a whole different animal. D'Amico talks about that a lot. It's like the, everyone here is good at what they do. Yeah. Everyone here can tackle. Everyone's got the, all the athletic tr attributes yeah. that you need, but not everyone's got the, the mental brain. headspace yeah. to do what you need to do to be that good. Yeah. I, I'm sure you've, have you and him had a couple conversations being a couple Alabama boys too? Oh, 100%. Well, I mean, he's on me every day. He, you know, he expects the highest. Um, when I first got here, he was on me so hard. He was like, Go ahead, Henry, run to the ball. You know, Henry, punch the ball, do this. He was on me. And even now, till now, he's, on me all the time, but now we got Aziz and Coach Billy Davis, they do a great job of staying on me, but I think a lot of the fire has to come within myself. Um, and I try every single day, you know, my heart is to, you know, bring fire, bring that energy that I didn't bring last year, that I didn't know how to bring, and then like, I try to bring it this year, so. People talk yeah. about it's hard to play football here for yeah. the Texans. Yeah. I mean, you guys practice outside in the heat, everyone mm -hmm. talks about that, but why is it so hard to play here? Uh, it's not for, like Will said it the best, yeah. man. It's, it's not for everybody. But the with way, all the PA rules, I, I, like, yeah. how do you do something that other teams can't do? Or like, you it, know what I'm saying? It's got to come. It, you know, there's so many rules and regulations that we can and can't do. Mm -hmm. But it honestly comes within the people in our locker room and the coaches. Um, we always say this: the standard is the standard. And it, whatever rules. But to we be have, fair, everyone says that. Everybody like, says everywhere that. I am, it's it like standard is a standard. That is true. Next but man up. <laughs> it, it's the guys in the locker room that kind of brings that culture that we have that that attitude, that mentality that we try to bring every single day. And I think that's I think it's accountability. I bet you there's yeah. accountability oh, in that locker room from the players versus the coaches. Oh, I'm saying. Because I've been around teams where they say there's accountability and there's not. And then there's, so a coach will get fired and then a player comes in and says there hasn't been accountability. Yeah. And if you're not, if you're looking to the coach for accountability, like good luck, because the coach can't be everywhere all the no. time. No, no, no. And that, that's like going back to the guys in the locker room, man. It's. If you're not like this and you're not, you don't think he's going to do what's right, he's going to do it, it's, it's not going to work. Take me behind the scenes for like a moment where there's player accountability. and it, Does it get awkward? Does it get weird? Because like, I'm yeah. sure there's a moment where like, dang, but it's, I think he's right. No, <laughs> yeah. there was, I, I mean, I'll just tell you one personally, like our Colts game, um, I'm not helping Aziz echo in the call sometimes. And Aziz looks at me, he's like, man, I need more from you. Mm -hmm. Demands that from me. So, you know, that's him holding me accountable to be able to relay a message to the guys in the back end so that they get the call. And it's little instances like that where it's like, hey, you need, to, you need to help me like do what you're supposed to do and communicate the call. So that's a little small piece that. How do you respond in those situations? Because not is, everybody is yeah. like, oh, whoa, I'm an adult here. I'll, I'll tell you what yeah. I will and will not do. <laughs> no, man, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the team. So uh -huh. it's like, if it's gonna help the team, if I know it's gonna help the team, I'm gonna do it. But you know, Aziz is the OG, he's the, he's the triple OG. So I'm like, hey. How sick was he it. last weekend? Oh, he was sick. Yeah, he seemed as a warrior. under the weather, and yeah. then he was a monster, too. He was a monster, man. There's only a few people I know that could do that, and he's one of them. That last two drives that you guys had against the Bills mm -hmm. allowed zero yards on six plays. Like, what? how do you do that against a team like the Bills? Well, yeah, you just got to execute. I mean, our front did a great job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it all starts up front. Our front does a really, really good job of attacking the quarterback and putting pressure on him. That makes it easier for us guys in the back end to cover um, and to be able to, you know, past him whenever the quarterback gets out because we know our front's going to go get him. Who's the funniest dude on your defensive team? I heard the other day it's, it's Tim Settle. Is that true? Tim, Tim's loud. Tim, Tim has a, a personality to him. I, for me, I think it's Delshawn Phillips. Why? He just got some crazy jokes, man. He got some good ones. You think you can say on camera? No, I can't no. say that. <laughs> <laughs> he got some good ones, some little hitters every now and then, but it, it's funny. How would you describe this team? Like you've been on a lot of teams. You've been yeah. in Tennessee, you've been in Alabama. I don't know if you want to talk about Alabama Vanderbilt a little bit here. No, 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 we'll go. Just, just get that section. Okay, yeah, okay. we'll just keep right. moving here. Just we'll keep keep going. fly right through that. <laughs> How do you describe this team compared to other teams you've been on? Oh man, it's, you know, it's one of those teams where it's like, you feel so close to them. You feel like, you know, everybody in the locker room. Um, and I've been a part of that team. You know, my junior year at Alabama is like, I felt like I knew everybody there. And I feel the same way about this team. It's like that connection that we have and although we're all grown men, we all go about our ways, you know, we all have our own lives and we all have families or whatnot. Um, I feel like I can talk to every single guy in that locker room about anything. 
And I think that's a testament to the culture that, that we have here. Man, I talk about that all the time about the why. If you know the why of the person next to you, you yeah. fight that much harder versus mm -hmm. you see him on Monday, you're off Tuesday, see him Wednesday, like yeah. I'll see you on Sunday type of deal. Yeah. Like you don't really get to know each other. You do that much more for the guy next to you when you get to know them. Oh, 100%. You know, that's like when you play football when you're young, you play with your friends. Yeah. You play with your neighborhood kids yeah. that you always play with. You go eat pizza with them after the game. You go <laughs> and, you know, do you do all the fun party stuff with them. And those ultimately, when you play that sport at that young age, those are like your best friends. And you go out there and will do anything for those guys. So that's kind of what we have going on here, and it feels really, really good. What's your full name? Henry Moses Ito Yese Toto. So where does, how do you say your last name just generally? Toto. So, so I have like three middle names. Moses, Ito, Yese are my middle names. So they don't, but they say Toto. Yeah. But you're saying Toto. I, I don't so know. So has wrong. everybody got this wrong? No, 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 no. I mean, kind of. If you're. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I Everyone, heard. as far as I'm concerned, says Henry Toa Toa. Yeah, that's that's a close. Like that's as close. But I mean, it's wrong. Then. No, it, yeah, it's Toa Toa. Toa Toa. Yeah, Henry Toa Toa. Yeah, you're close. You're close. It's closer than Toa Toa. Yeah, it is close. Like, so everyone's getting it wrong. A little bit. A little bit. It's no, okay. a lot of it. It's, either, it's heard, black and white. I didn't heard so many crazy. I so I heard. asked Dari Ngumbawale this yeah. question. He had some wild answers about the I'm craziest you. pronunciations he's heard. I'm telling you. What have you heard? I done heard Tao Tao, Tutu. Um, what else have I heard? Those are probably the two main ones. Every time I used to go to class, Henry Tutu, are you here? <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. That's me. Yeah, Ms. sure, why not? That's me, Miss Smith. That's me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so it's not To'o To'o? Yeah, it's To'o To'o. To'o To'o. To 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 yeah. Oh, I see. I got the apostrophes oh. add that extra. To -o -to -o. Yeah. So it's not Toto. It's Toto. -to -o. Yeah. There you go. My, see? My Part of the culture now. I see my boy. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I'm, I'm, we're going to educate people on oh, this. Oh, yeah, 100%. They'll, they'll love that. Yeah. Have you brought any of your culture in the locker room? You shared it with any of your players? A little like, bit. Like I did, dinner time? I, I did. Uh, no, I haven't done no dinner time. I actually, my wife brings some Hawaiian snacks and I, you know, gave it to some of the staff, Morgan and Camille, um, shared that with them. Um, but I, for my rookie show, I kind of did a little, a little chant with the boys, and they loved it. What'd you do? It was just like a, it's like a small chant that all the Samoans like. You go, mili, 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 batia, batia, little mite, little mite, little mite, bati, male, chihu, and then chihu. So what are you saying? What does it mean? It's What's just one clap, here? two clap. It's just in my language. What are you saying? It's just mili, mili, like basically getting ready. Batia, it means one time. Little mite means two times, and then little bati, so two times. Male, like, male mean then chihu, then you chihu. This is going to be real ignorant, like, but here we go. Is this like the all black t deal? Is there any uh, crossover is, with the New Zealand culture? Not the all uh, blacks? Kind of, not really. This is like a Samoan thing. So can you do this pregame and then, because can we teach the whole team this and do like a pregame no, type we, of? We definitely can. If like, they all listen and, and actually oh, execute. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> if, they, if they pay attention, that's the hard thing part. at a time. Yeah. Damn, dude. All right. We're hosting. We're actually having the Jets game on our air. So I want to ask you this question ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It's on Halloween. Yeah. What's the favorite costume that you've ever worn for Halloween? Favorite costume? Uh, I don't know. It looks like you have an answer, but you don't want to say <laughs> I it. I have an answer, but I don't want to say it. But I'm not going to say what it. What was it? I'm not going to say Come it. Come on. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. No. No, no, no. This, is, it. It. this is your moment. Get it out there before no, the no, pictures no, leak. No, no, no. No. No pictures leak. I probably I told my mom hide all those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I used to always dress up as a football player. I was always a football player when I was young. All right. I was always football, but I got a funny one, but it's okay. I'm not going to What is it? it? No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to share it. I'm gonna, oh, we'll save it for another opportunity, another interview. We'll save it for later. <laughs> if it comes, who knows? It's we'll, all right. we'll, we'll do this later. Yeah. Candy corn. Oh, no. I don't even have to ask, right? No. It's trash. It's trash. Absolute worst. You eat candy corn on Halloween. Ah. Yeah, next question. Yeah. Candy corn is no good for nobody. That's it, bro. That's all I needed. Appreciate you, brother. Man, thank you for doing this. That appreciate was fun. Appreciate you, brother. If you like that conversation, first of all, I appreciate the honest feedback and the positive feedback. Comment on YouTube if that's where you're watching. If you're on Fox Local, send it to your friends. Send it on YouTube as well. Like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Please help the algorithm here on Kicking It With Kunkel. Super duper appreciative of that. Okay. Not a great week for the Texans, obviously, because of Nico Collins being shelved on the IR. There were reports from some people that maybe this wasn't going to be a long injury. Like, listen, hamstring injuries, when they bark and you're out for the second half of a game against the Bills where you were needed, 
you knew that he was going to miss some time. I didn't know how long he was going to be out, but you knew that he was going to likely miss at least a week. And I like the fact that the Texans are saying, listen, dude, sit out a month. Don't come back for that daggone Jets game in the Meadowlands because that field is absolute trash. That's the last thing we need from you. But this is going to be hard without Nico. But with that being said, if you're going to pick one of the position groups in one room where you can at least sustain an injury for a little bit, it's that wide receiver room. That's why you brought in Stephon Diggs, and you now you have Tank Dell. Hopefully you get Joe Mixon back sooner than later. He's not going to play, it doesn't look like, against the Patriots as he did not practice on Wednesday. Um, but you have Dalton Schultz as well. You have so many weapons. C.J. Stroud called this a five-headed monster coming into the season. So you can at least afford – a injury at, at some point during the season because of the depth you have in the wide receiver room. Not to mention the Texans at four and one are really in a situation now where they're vying to be as healthy as humanly possible towards the late end of the season and into the playoffs, because this is no longer a team that needs like every single win to see how many they can stack to just try to get in the playoffs. I think that we know that they're going to be in the playoffs barring a catastrophic situation the rest of the year. So you, you want to set yourself up for success. Don't let Nico come back after two or three weeks because he feels like he can, and maybe he even could. And then all of a sudden re-aggravate that. It's just not worth it. This team is playing for much more than wins right now in October, November. You've got to be healthy down the stretch in December into January and hopefully into February as well. Right, so with that said, who needs to step up? I'm looking at tank Dell. Like, Tank's got to get back to what he did last year. Look at some of the numbers that he's done this year. In the opener, he had three catches for 40 yards, all right. And then the Bears on Sunday Night Football, just one catch, negative three yards. Five catches the following week in Minnesota, which was a wash. And then Buffalo, four catches, 38 yards. And Bobby Slowick has tried to get this dude the ball any way possible. Too many gadget plays. I've talked about this. I hate the gadget plays for this offense because they're too good of an offense, or at least should be too good of an offense to have to rely on that. Sometimes they work, so I'm okay with it, but like, it just seems like too much trickeration and, and gadgety stuff that this offense doesn't need to, ha to do that. Like That's for offenses that need to trick you because they can't line it up and, and just beat you one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm looking at Tank to really pick up the slack here. Stephon's been like as advertised all year. He hasn't really had the touchdowns. He had two against the Colts. I'm okay with that only because Nico's picked up a lot of slack and the running game a little bit in the last game against the Bills. Cam Akers hit pay dirt. So I've been okay with him not getting in the end zone because he's been such a volume guy in catching the ball. So the Colts, he had six catches, Bears four catches, Vikings 10, Jags five, Bills six, and 82, 69, 94, 94 37 yards going backwards on that list. So he's been heavily involved, but he's also had big time catches in big time situations on third down conversion. So I love what Steph has done. I'd like to see more Dalton Schultz, especially in the red zone, a bigger target, but he too has been great on third down. But without Nico Collins, Who's going to be the ad lib guy? Last year it was Tank until Tank went down, and then it became Nico Collins from that moment on to now. But now Tank again needs to return to being that dude. Who's the dude that is going to be in the right spot at the right time when CJ inevitably has to escape the pocket and make a throw? Because that's been Nico as of late, and he's been absolutely fantastic with it. All right, let's go through some of these stats that I have here on CJ Stroud and some of the things is that he's doing. I'm just going to read these straight to you because they're so in depth and, and so deep in what he's try, trying to actually accomplish here. CJ Stroud ranks third in the NFL with 1,385 passing yards this season and has tallied at least 325 passing yards in each of the past two weeks in 20 career games. Stroud has recorded at least 325 passing yards in six games and has totaled at least 300 passing yards in eight games. So with 325 passing yards against the Patriots on Sunday, Stroud will become the second player in NFL history to record at least 325 passing yards in seven or more games in his first two seasons, joining Justin Herbert, who did 11 games. Like, to be able to watch a quarterback like CJ this young, this early, and this consistently in his career has been so much fun. 
and you're in every single game because of it. And he's been the hero, and he hasn't even played his best football this season yet. He played the best football he probably has all year, for sure, I would say, against the Bills. With that being said, he had two turnovers. That interception, which was a nice play by the defender, not a great throw, and then the fumble, got to secure the ball in the pocket. Of course, and, and it could have been catastrophic, but of course, the defense bailed him out, and the defense has been awesome for the Texans in some complimentary football type of ways. So also for C.J. Stroud, if he has 300 passing yards against the Patriots, he will tie Jeff Garcia. Go, how about that? I don't know if that's a great list. I mean, I like Jeff Garcia as a quarterback, but C.J.'s better. He would join Garcia, Andrew Luck, and Hall of Famer Kurt Warner for the fifth most 300 pass, 300 yard gains by a player in his first two seasons in NFL history. Good for Jeff Garcia to be on that list. A little shocker there. Damn. So anyway, dude's a stud. He's really fun to watch. He's the reason this team is as good as they are right now. Um, Because the offensive line has not been great. We've got to get their running game back. Damian Pierce expected to play. Or or D'Amico Ryan said that he will play. Here's actually what D'Amico said on Damian Pierce. Excited to have Damian back, uh, back at practice. Uh, He's done a great job with his rehab process. And... He's back out working, so we're expecting to have him ready to go for the game. Now, also in talking with Nico Collins and him being out, here's what his quarterback and his head coach and Tank all had to say on the loss of Nico as well. Nico is a big, big factor in our offense. We all know that, but we still have other um, players who can go down and stretch the field, you know, um, win deep routes and underneath and do the, do some of the similar things that Nico does, man. But just feel like all together we just got to play football. You know, we got to just have other guys step up, which I think, you know, they can. Um, and I think Hutch will do a great job, Rob, Mitch. Um, so, you know, definitely just next man up mentality. You got to be able to win football games without them for a little bit. Again, losing Nico, everybody has to get going. <laughs> and so we need everybody, right? Everybody has to step up and own their role. So we'll see who that will be for Sunday. We don't know right now today <laughs> who's going to make those plays. You never know. And that's what's exciting about our game. Any given Sunday, different guys being playmakers, stepping up, making plays. Now, I don't know that this is becoming a real conversation because I still think Harrison Bucker or Justin Tucker are the two best kickers in the league for real, for real. But Kaimi Fairbairn is in the conversation. He's in the conversation for real, like Nico Collins is legitimately, or at least was in the conversation, of best wide receiver in the NFL. I think we all think Justin Jefferson's the best, but Nico Collins was starting to enter the room. And if you're in the conversation, that's all you can really ask for because it takes at least a year or two to overcome somebody that has been considered the best in the league for three or four years, or how many years JJ's been in the league. Same, situa- same situation with Kaimi Fairbairn as well. Harrison Bucker's been doing it for a long period of time. He's been doing it on the biggest stage. He's made some of the biggest kicks in NFL history with the Chiefs because that's the stage he's been on. And then the same thing with Justin Tucker. Dude's been in a stud for so long. He's been so accurate for so long. He's been so reliable for so long that if Kaimi wants to get there, he's got to do it for another year, two, three years. But right now, He's now been the AFC Special Teams Player of the Week twice, in Week 2 and now in Week 5. So to earn that honor, obviously you're doing something right and you're starting to stack bricks, and that's what Kaimi's done. And the guy is legit. He is in the conversation for best kicker in the league. And then this, let's talk about this defense because what this defense did against the Bills was so impressive down the stretch. Final two drives. So that fumble by C.J. Stroud led to an extremely short field. I think they were inside the 10. I could be wrong on that, but very short field. The Bills picked up zero yards. The Texans' defense held them to a field goal. They tie the game, and then the offense goes out. They don't get anything. Tommy Townsend, great punt, pins it at the three, and then the defense again. I think there was 30-some-odd seconds left at this point. And the defense, again, allowed zero yards, setting up the offense. Again, a chunk full of yards after Robert Woods' punt return, and then Kaimi Fairbairn. I did a little bit of a breakdown, by the way. You can find on my Twitter account, at Will Kunko Fox, or I, I don't think I put it on Instagram, but it's at Will Kunko if it is there. But I did a breakdown of those 41 seconds on the back end of the Bills game to end and win was executed absolutely flawlessly, including time management, The way they went about that was special teams, defense, and offense in that order. It was was really, really, really fun to watch. So, anyway, 
I think that's all I really got to say this week. I uh, appreciate y'all, y'all watching, kicking with Kunkel. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I love talking to all the fans and answering their, any questions you might have about anything. Astros, Rockets about to start as well, and Texans as well. Anything going on in Houston, Cougar basketball about to get underway too. Uh, so reach out, holler. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.